Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Side, the art and science of watch collection. What I want to do today is probably risky in one sense. I wanted to take a look at what I think are the best watches in the world and watchmakers. And I, when I finished it, I kept thinking of all of these other ones. And so in the comment section afterwards, feel free to say, oh my God, I can't believe you didn't include so-and-so. <laughs> That's going to happen. But these are the these are these are the the ten that I picked, leaving out some other excellent ones. So bear with me on this. Uh, the first one is Grubel Force, a uh, handmade one. Uh, this particular watch is is one that I've always really 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 liked. Um, it's got a white gold case, enamel dial, manual winding, which I, I like, a power reserve of 60 hours, and 60, 21,600 semi-oscillations per hour. Uh, another one, what I did is that one is 750,000 Swiss francs, which is about $800,000. One that was, I thought, well, let's see if they got something a little better price. The, the Balancier 3 was 160000 So all of these are really expensive. Most of them, almost all of them, are, at least I can't afford. Maybe some of you can. But it's it's one, the thing about them is that we can find things around them or related to them somehow. Well, let's go on. Uh, the next one is Philippe Dufour. Now, this these things are going for a million bucks these days. The thing I like about this, it's um, 18,000 semi-oscillations per hour, two and a half hertz, free-sprung, Breguet overcoil. This this watch, I mean, the, you know, just about any three-hand watch could do the same thing. I mean, it's it's not but it's the way it's done. Uh, the Dufour is known for the finishing and and the excellence with which he puts everything together. and sort of like as close to a perfect watch as you can get. And I love the name Simplicity because it really points to the important elements of the watch. Uh, the third one is F.P. Jorn. Uh, the one I happen to like the best is the Chronomet Optimum. And that's because it has a, um, let's see if I can say this right, a Rimatois Egalité, which is a little thing that goes in to keep constant force. And it sort of keeps rewinding the at least a part of the watch so that there's, as it goes, instead of like when it starts unwinding, it starts losing some of its power. And the Rimantois, what it does, it keeps rewinding the thing so it has a constant force. Um, more than anyone else, F. P. Jorn has won more Grand Prix Aiguille d'Or. This is a grand prize uh, than anyone else. He has something else, too. He has gold plates and uh, bridges. These are not gold-plated, but solid gold uh, bridges and plates. Really an amazing uh, watches at FP Jorn. He keeps coming out with new ones too. Um, Roger Smith is another one. It just makes these incredible watches. He was a, a student of um, George Daniels and his watches again you have this just everything. He does everything. I mean he, he, he starts with a rod of gold for the case and grinds it out and flattens it out and does everything. His stuff is, again, is wonderful. 18,000 uh, semi-oscillations per hour, uh, which is, again, something I like very much. It's got a, up, uh, a retrograde calendar up there at 12 o'clock. It's just, I mean, they're, they're not, it's not complicated in a, in a messy way, I'll put it that way. Series 3, 800,000, they're almost impossible to get these days but really nice watches. Um, Romain Gauthier Insight Micro Rotor. Now, uh, 75,000, that sounds like, whoa, these guys are <laughs> in the bargain basement. Uh, this particular one is pretty close to it. It's 
just the again, it's a beautiful watch. One of the things about Romain Gauthier is that he makes all of his own um, parts. Uh, usually, uh, companies will get the gears and this and that from specialists who make them, and then have them, you know, get all of the get all of the movement parts. But uh, Romain Gauthier likes to make his own. One thing, just as a as a tip, a friendly amount, a friendly percentage of the of Romain Gauthier is owned by Chanel, uh, and that sort of was a place that you can find some things that are very close and in fact uh, one there caliber one uh was part of it was in the design was uh, made with the help of romain gauthier the next one is uh hajime uh asoka uh, asoka i i can't probably said it wrong i apologize uh, his stuff is, is really beautiful. Uh, the Tsunami is one that I especially like. And again, this is a fairly simple one. Now, the, this is the newest version. Uh, it's called the Tsunami Art Deco. Um, but that's not the, the attraction, isn't the dial, but rather the beautiful way that he handles the movement and the, the way he makes everything really does incredible uh, work on this. Again, this is at 18,000 semi-oscillations per hour, manual winding. Most of these are manual winding, too. They're, that's another thing about that. I noticed that. Gee, all of these guys, are they're all under 4 hertz and are all, you know, are mostly manual winding, not all of them. Okay, uh, this next one is, again, one of my favorite watchmakers ever, Marco Lang. Uh, Marco Lang really built uh, Lang and Heim. Uh, Heim was there. Heim was there for like one year, and then for I don't know, close to twenty years. Marco uh, built all of these beautiful watches and movements. At some point, it was around 2018, 2019. I guess the economics of it, he had to leave, and uh, so he went and started his own company called uh, Marco Lang Watches. But still, you can find some of his, I mean, most of them, most of the watches at uh, Langenheim still have his movements in it, uh, or, you know, maybe some variation of it, but uh, they still have, I think, the, sort of the sum total of some of the greatest movements, I think, uh, in contemporary watchmaking. The, um, and I'll say this one wrong, the Zeichel Stitch, uh, this watch has, it's really uh, showing two watches, but there's really one watch, and you have it, and you look at one side, and then you can flip it over, and you can look at the back. In other words, you sort of have one that is an open face, and the other one that's not. So, uh, <laughs> again, this is a, a, just sort of a cool thing. One of the characteristics, up there at 12 o'clock, uh, and you can see in the movement they put a he, he puts a diamond in the uh, is, I guess there was some kind of traditional German watchmaking where they put diamonds. Now this one is listed for fifty one thousand five hundred. Again, in terms of these other ones, this is a real bargain. Um, oh, something about this. I went to the site. If you go to the Marco Lang watches site, I think the name was just called Marco Lang. One word. He has these CAD downloads for 3D printing of his watch. <laughs> you can get all of the parts of it and put it together with a CAD. I don't know exactly. I don't know exactly how it is, but I do know that you can take it and then put it in some kind of 3D printer and duplicate it. Uh, it's really cool. Take a look at it anyway. All you gotta do is there's one of the things on the uh, menu, it says CAD. Click that and they'll have all these things you can download. Anyway, Marco Lang is, uh, to me, one of the just you know, outstanding uh, watchmakers. Now, this is sort of an interesting one. Jean-Marc Viderec, Agengraf. Now, Agenor, which is the 
company that was started by Jean-Marc Viterug, what he did, uh, he never made watches. He just made movements and parts of movements. And so all of these companies that won Grand Prix awards uh, often had either one of the uh, modules that he made for them or the whole movement, the entire movement. In 2007, he was made Watchmaker of the Year. That was the first time they gave out the prize of Watchmaker of the Year went to Jean-Marc Viterac. And he's retired now, but his uh, his legacy is this Agengraf chronograph. Uh, this chronograph is just, uh, <laughs> you, the, the reviewers who know more about chronographs, I'm not a chronograph person, in fact, I, I don't, I, to me, they're, they're too much, there's too much noise in them. But in this one, there's some options, like the one that H. Moser has and a brand new one by Ming. They, they all use this same movement. These watches go for around 40000 so they're not inexpensive, but, I mean, they're not insane either. Uh, so this is another one too, is, is a top watchmaker who doesn't wait, make watches, but makes the movements for the watches. Uh, Daniel Roth, Turbion subscription. Now this is another very strange story. Uh, when he was starting off, uh, the Chaumet brothers owned Breguet and they hired, uh, Daniel Roth to bring it back to the standards of Abraham Louis Breguet, but so he did, and did that, and was made him for, I guess he worked for him for about 10 years, and then the Chaumet brothers went bankrupt. They almost went to jail. So Daniel Ross started his own company, and uh, that was supported by, I forgot who, support, who their support was. Eventually, he, they were, the name, Daniel Roth name, was bought by Bouvari, uh, and I think he worked with them for about a year, not, wasn't, he wasn't used to working with that <laughs> environment, I'll put it that way. Well, LVMH, Louis Vuitton, um, owns Bugari. And so what he decided to, to, well, he talked to Daniel Ross and said, why don't you come back and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have watches under your own name. He had some other name, John, John Daniel something or other uh, for the his company because he couldn't use Daniel Roth because Bulgari owned it. Well, now this is a watch from the uh, 2024 Grand Prix, uh, the Tourbillon subscription. I probably said it wrong. Uh, he, he, you got three hertz. And this is the, it, one of the interesting things, in addition to having a Tourbillon, it has one of these uh, three-armed hands, uh, and so you have these three tracks for the hours, and depending on where the, uh, you know, which hand is where, <laughs> it's tell time. Sort of a cool thing. Okay, now the final one is one that's very familiar, uh, Kari Wooten Lannan, again, and, and I apologize the name, the Vinge 8 ISO enamel. Now, while Wooten Lannan has won, I don't know how many Grand Prix prices and in a lot of different categories, this one didn't win. It was one of the finalists, but it didn't win. This, I think this one is from 2017, but it's one I happen to like a lot. Uh, 98,000 Swiss francs. Again, another one I can't afford, but it's got this special escapement. Oh, by the way, too, and this is another one, 18,000 semi-oscillations per hour, or the VPH vibrations per hour, but it's really semi-oscillation. It's got a special escapement, and it has two two wheels with it, and I'm not sure how that works, uh, but it it's one of his things that he really likes a lot. And since it was in this watch, I thought, man, it'd be cool to have have a watch like that, the Vinge. Okay, now I know that there's going to be someone who's going to say, I can't believe you didn't do this. Well, so tell me. So that's what we have the comment section for. Say, I would have included this one as best watch in the world to get. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, this is an opportunity to subscribe if you like. And until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of watch collection.